In this video, we are going to talk about precedence and scope. So we've seen the term precedence before. That refers to our order of operations when it comes to our, our logical operators. And we've seen that, you know, with the operators that we have already, that negation takes priority. After that, it's the and, or, and exclusive or. And then finally, we have the conditional and biconditional. And when we have like multiple and or exclusive ors, we need parentheses among them to determine which one comes first. Same thing with having multiple conditionals and biconditionals. Now that we have operators in the mix, like for all there exists, they will take priority, first priority. Okay, so let's do an example where we discuss this. So let's let the domain of X be students at Santa Clara University. So I'm gonna abbreviate Santa Clara University as SCU, so the domain is students at SCU. H of X is the propositional function, X is home. Let Q be campus is quiet. And I wanna consider the proposition for all X, H of X implies Q. So I see a for all here, I see a there implies here. Our precedence rules say that, well, the for all takes precedence. So that means I can view this as doing the for all X, H of X first. So putting a parentheses around that. And after I do that, then doing the, that implies Q happens. So notice this is not the same as dealing with the there implies first, because I could think of that as putting a parentheses around the implication and doing that first and then doing the for all second. But is there really a difference in what these mean? So let's, let's look at each of them. So when I have the for all X, H of X first, and then I do the, the implication after, well, the implication, let's just break this down. The implication means I have some if then statement. I have some if then statement. And the if part is saying for all X, H of X. So that is saying for all students at SEU, H of X, which is saying X is home. So for all students, for all X, X is home. That's just another way of saying if all SEU students, if all SEU students are home, I'm gonna move this around, sorry. If all SU students are home, then Q, which says then campus is quiet. So in other words, the rule that this is establishing is when all SU students are home, campus is quiet. Okay, so let's talk about the second one and think about, well, is the second one different? For the second one, we have the for all in front of everything, and then we have the implication after that. So for the for all part is saying, for all students X, for all students X, or I, I should say for all SCU students X, okay, to be more precise. And then I have my if then portion. So I'll have if some stuff and then some stuff. And the if portion says H of X, so that's saying X is home. So if X is home, then Q. So then campus is quiet. Then campus is quiet. So if we think about what this is saying, this is saying for any SCU student, call them X, we have the following rule where if that student X is home, then campus is quiet. And this rule needs to be true for any SU student. So if there were 100 students at SU, when the first student was home, campus would need to be quiet. When the second student was home, campus would need to be quiet. So what the difference with this is, this statement is saying that any one individual student being home makes campus quiet, makes campus quiet. And that's quite different from what the first statement is saying. The first statement is saying is, well, we need all SU students to be home. And then the rule says campus is quiet. Okay, so these are definitely different as a result. There's definitely a difference in terms of what they mean. All right, so now I wanna end the video by defining what's called scope. So the scope of a quantifier refers to what does it apply to? In the first statement, 
the for all applies to just h of x. So I say that the scope of the for all x is h of x. And the second statement, the for all x applies to this whole thing in the parentheses. So the scope is h of x implies q. And the point of this example is to help demonstrate that in general, when we change the scope of a quantifier, it can change the meaning of our propositions. And I want to end by mentioning that if we have a variable that's not in the scope of any quantifier, like for example, if I have h of x implies q, I have this propositional function, and there's no quantifier in front of that propositional function, then it's not a proposition. So this is something that we want to be careful about when we start converting word problems to these logical statements that when we write propositional functions, we want to make sure that we have some quantifier in front. Otherwise, it's not actually a proposition.